First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Farooq Bukhani, and I have the pleasure of having Mr. Amir Khan with me, who's going to be answering some questions. We've got some pre-formatted questions on the entrepreneur's journey for you. And then we're going to kind of leave it open for everybody to ask questions as they see fit. How does that sound? So the first exercise I'd like to do is something that never really happens, and I know everybody's probably a little networked out, but everybody stand up for a second, turn around, and say hello to the person. Just to get to know people that you don't normally know. Excellent, excellent. So now, now you know who's here and now in the back of your head. So first of all, I wanted to also inject something, and I apologize for the non-Urdu speakers. If hai our Pakistani event, Kapti Nazarat, Salaam Alaikum. Welcome. And I have a great pleasure with you, 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 and I have a great pleasure with you. So, I have a great pleasure with you. For the members of our audience, I just wanted to let everybody know this is a Pakistani event, and I spoke a little bit about a welcome and thank you for coming. She might. You never know. You never know. I have been, I stand corrected, potentially. Anyway, so, uh, just to kind of kick this off, um, you know, Amir and I spoke a little bit. I have the fortune of having Amir with us in Los Angeles, and I'm the charter, one of the charter members in LA. We've just started a chapter, so tell your friends. Free plug for the SoCal chapter. But, uh, you know, he's a really down-to-earth, nice guy with a great story, and we thought, let's just talk a little bit about some of the foundational things that make Amir who he is. And I'm going to be over here, I'm going to turn the mic over to you and I'm going to ask you a question. And that question is, Amir, what do you think, what was that moment in your childhood when you realized you were different and wanted to do something different? Uh, that's an interesting question. You know, I'm a very non-traditional child. And uh, when I was growing up, I used to play more than study. Um, parents were always running after me. Saying, hey, <laughs> you better sit down and study. I should be saying that my daughter is here. So, in any case, um, you know, when I was three, four years old, I used to make these things out of, out of mind. And, you know, I don't know if you remember Kana, uh, it's like, you know, soft inside, and uh, it's, a, it's a piece of stick. So, you know, make toys out of that and stuff like that. So, it was quite unique what I was able to do when I was little, and the uh, parents always thought, hey, He's more interested in playing games and, you know, and doing those types of things versus um, studying. So it's interesting because, you know, if you have creativity, uh, I think parents are not going to like you very much today. Um, if you're a very creative child and you're not traditional, because everybody wants to have, you know, uh, 4.0 or grades in their schools. And that's not necessarily uh, always what makes you successful. You need to have a very balanced life, right? Um, and kids discover things over time. As you grow up, you start to realize, you know, what's good for you and what's not. And, uh, you know, um, so that, that's something that was, you know, when I was a child, always playing, grew up in Mortal Town before, and uh, I like to tell people that the Mortal Town is quite unique in the sense that uh, it was a very well laid out community with a lot of lawns, you know, grounds, playgrounds. So, first thing we used to do after coming back from, from school was to go play hockey or cricket or soccer or tennis or, you know, we had a squash course nearby our house. So, we always, you could find us in the, you know, one, one or the other uh, sports arenas, um, arena, I mean, the lawns that we had. And they were very well, well maintained at that time. Um, so, that's, you know, and I went to a divisional public school in Morton Town, a uh, small school run by a guy from the Air Force. Uh, very regimented, you know, discipline. You have to show your meal in the morning and you show your short socks. They have to be matching, the shoes have to be polished. Uh, so, that type of and parade in the morning, you, know, you had uh, assembly in the morning and sang the national anthem and all that, right? So, a lot of people would probably remember that from, from those days. Thanks, Anna. So, I'm, I'm going to keep challenging a little here, okay. and I'm putting you on the spot. So, a, a lot of you are probably here trying to figure out, okay, I'm somewhere in a cycle. Either it could be from a career perspective or business perspective. And the next question I had uh, that we thought that might interest 
the audience is, I mean, where was that moment in this startup environment that you were in where you were like, I'm done, I'm giving up, I want a paycheck again. Is there any moment that you can describe and what took you through that? Yeah, it, it, it's always an interesting journey when you're starting off, right? You come up with an idea, you believe in it, but others don't, right? So uh, uh, an idea, you know, has to be good enough. It has to be, you know, uh, uh, something that uh, people can use. It becomes a need for the customers. And at the same time, so, so you come up with this idea and you start believing in it and you start pitching it to the VCs and every VC that you go to and they say, you know, big deal, you know, I don't believe in this. And especially if you are in a field which uh, is, you know, uh, quite old, like computer networking, right? It's been around for 30 years, it's been there very well. Uh, Juniper did very well, there were many other companies like HP and uh, even IBM and whatnot, Dell, uh, who delved into uh, that market. It was a very mature market, right? So, so we still don't uh, uh, believe in that. So our team, uh, again, you know, it's always a team play. So we used to go and pitch to the VCs and come back disheartened and say that, you know, oh boy, again, another no. Uh, so we did that uh, for quite a few months and eventually somebody believed us and they said that, you know, uh, okay, I see the value of this. And uh, then, um, interestingly, Sequoia uh, found out about us from some of the customers in New York and when we went there, um, they said, wow, we are interested in this idea. So we will write you a check ourselves. You know, rather than bringing in more investors, we'll just uh, you know, give you all of the eight and a half million dollars. So we raised that inside the company. So you always struggle through the first phase, you know. Um, so never be disheartened, we'll always keep trying. Thank you. So and I think just, is this, are there people finding value in this? I'd like to get a little bit of a pulse. Sure. Okay, so the gentleman has asked a question about what was the concept and the idea. So idea was related to computer networking, if you're familiar with the Cisco, what they do. Uh, they, you know, the customers deploy wide area networks, right? They're interconnecting their branches and data centers. And uh, traditionally, it's been either done through technologies like frame relay or ATM, uh, or lease lines, right? Lease lines were virtualized uh, through technologies like friendly and ATM where you could create multiple logical segments over a single physical uh, cable. And then came MPLS, uh, which was utilized by the likes of AT&T's and Verizon's and all the global providers to offer uh, private connectivity services to interconnect, uh, you know, different uh, branches and data centers for, for, for companies, whether the, the data centers were inside or outside. Uh, so, uh, we saw an opportunity where things were migrating into the cloud, uh, applications requirements were growing. So let's take an example of Office 365. Right? When it was sitting on your computer, the bandwidth requirements were low. When you put it out in the cloud, all of a sudden your bandwidth requirements for connectivity go up. But the traditional private connectivity was extremely expensive, right? Uh, very low speed, but at home you get 100 times the bandwidth for maybe one or fourth the price. So we saw that opportunity, we said the bandwidth requirements are going to grow. People are not going to be able to spend that kind of money which is required to accommodate cloud-based applications. So let's focus on solving this problem by bringing internet in the mix. And the moment you bring internet in the mix, it's an insecure environment. It's no longer a private environment or browser at t that you're used to. So you have to secure it. So it, it has to be inherently secure, otherwise the customers are not, just not going to trust it. So fortunately, that transition, we caught that transition, built the technology, which was 10, at least 10x better than what was offered. You know, and uh, to date, it's the primary technology at Cisco going forward. They have replaced their own technology with uh, what we built. So you, you, you're proud of that, right? I mean, you built something which is going to be continued to use. A lot of startups, when they get acquired, you know, the large companies, they get rid of that technology, they acquire them, you know, and slowly the technology vanishes. So we are very proud that uh, technology is continuing to be used. 
Great. So uh, I just wanted to bring context to make sure this is bringing value to everybody. Is this are these questions? Is what we're talking about? Is this good for you? you learning something from this? Yeah. Come on, wake up. I know it's four o'clock. It's getting late. So the the question now that I'm um, that uh, that's also something that you know you've gone through the journey now. You know, one journey's done. You know, you've come out of it. The quintessential question: What's next? You know, um, you keep trying all your life, right? So you have to do uh, hopefully better and better things. So I'm involved in a couple of projects right now. Uh, one is in the healthcare space, uh, which is related to home diagnostics, uh, because diagnosing diseases is very expended, expensive and it's time consuming. And if you can bring it to the home and solve that problem, um, some of those diseases are, you know, there's a stigma associated with that, especially in women where they don't want to necessarily go to the doctor and you know uh, get tested for those diseases. So it's always helpful from that perspective. So we're working, you know, um, on some technology which is related to proteomics and also uh, combining that with big data uh, to figure out how we're going to solve this problem and make it very inexpensive and uh, uh, available. You know, at the same time. And I also started a consulting company with my brother. Uh, so we're deploying, you know, the technology that we built at Rutella. So we are starting to uh, offer, uh, you know, uh, design and consulting services on that. Uh, that's also uh, needed in the industry because the technology is taking off and there are not enough experts. Uh, there are folks at Cisco or in a few other companies outside. So we saw that as an opportunity to start that. And now I'm exploring uh, the next idea, which I cannot obviously talk about, but uh, you know, you always continue to look for the next uh, idea to get funded and start again. So, uh, so hopefully, you know, uh, we'll get started in the next year or so. Great. Uh, I'm now going to open it up for questions. And I'm, I'm sorry, I just have a question. Do we have anybody in here under 18? Do you have any questions first? Okay, come on up. Here's your chance, your moment in lights. Loud and proud. Your name and your question, okay? Okay, my name is Connie. And my question is, how do you, like, not get distracted from your goals? Connie asks, how do you not get distracted from your goals? How do I, you need to be my new tutor. <laughs> I think that's a very mature question for you. Uh, yeah, it, it's important that uh, you know you focus on the problem and you focus on how you're going to solve it. And uh, you know one of the most important things in building a company or a startup is that you focus on a problem that the customers have. If you build a technology that the customer or you know user is not going to use then you can build the best technology in the world and it's not going to be very useful. It will not take the, you know, the, the, the business anywhere. So, um, the approach that we took was that we focused on the customer problems by talking to them and uh, figured out uh, what kind of problems they were running into. And then we sat down and took a very comprehensive approach to solving that problem. We sat down for many months discussing every aspect of how we are going to technologically uh, solve that problem, whether it's existing protocols or not. Uh, you know, uh, our team was quite uh, unique in the sense that you know, we were not developers, software developers or hardware developers. We were product managers and consulting engineers, right? And we understood customers' environments very, very well. And uh, we learned from that and then came. So, so, so as long as you stay focused on the you know, crux of the problem and not let your mind go and deviate into many other directions and say, this is the problem I'm going to solve, it will automatically converge to, you know, solving that problem and not focus on unnecessary things. And that's the approach that we took. And as leaders, as managers, you have to make sure that the team is focused on, is extremely focused. Because if you don't execute when you start 
then you might as well go home. Right? Execution is the key. And if you talk to any venture capitalist, you will hear them say, execution, execution, execution. You know, ideas you know, can be mediocre. But if you execute well, you have a strong engineering delivery, and at the same time, you have figured out the go-to-market. Meaning, how do you sell this to the customers? How do you, uh, you know, enable the market? Uh, it's extremely important. So as long as you balance it out and figure out both aspects of building a startup, you're going to be very, very successful. If you just stay focused on the technology piece alone, as I said earlier, you're not going to go uh, places. Okay, next question. Uh, yeah, my name is John Sir. Uh, the question about is, is it's about the idea. When you have the idea, I presume you were working, and at what point do you have the conviction and of course there's going to be conflict of interest if you're working in the same field for a company and then and we have a conflict of interest me and then you have the conviction for the idea. When do you say, okay, all right, I need to stop working and start building the company or putting people together and get started. Thank you. Yeah, good question. Um, you know, whenever you're working at a large company, uh, and a lot of you do, you always know that there are problems that you want to solve. But because of the umbrella of this large company, you're never able to solve them, you know, for whatever reasons. It could be that too many people are involved. Hundreds and hundreds of people are involved, and you know, it's decisions by committee. That's the benefit of a startup. When you go out and you start thinking about an idea, you know, they always say that when you take the first step, that's when you can take many of the steps. If you don't take the first step, you, you know, never going to. So ideas, as I said earlier, don't have to be, you know, stellar ideas. It could be in an existing market. It could be in a, you know, a brand new idea solving a brand new problem. Um, I'm sure if you guys are working in uh, companies today, think about how many problems are there that could be solved better. And because of how historically your companies solve them, what the constraints are, because of which you are not able to make it 10x or 20x better. Right? So opportunities are always there. There is, you know, no field. If people can sell water, you can build technology and sell it. That's my belief, you know. And uh, if you are, you you have the conviction, you are dedicated. You go and study. You know, you have to spend hours studying. Right? That's the most important thing. And uh, even though I'm a child, I didn't study much, but now my main thing is that I'm always studying. Right? So learning about new technologies, learning about new areas. I mean, I don't know anything about healthcare. Right? I'm working with a team in that area, right? So you have to always think about new things, how to solve problems, and then go after that, right? Never let anybody stop you. And uh, I think that's the entrepreneurial spirit that makes you successful, is you do not have a bone in your body that says, I'm gonna lose, right? You're saying, I'll figure out a way to get to the next level. And if you can't do that, it's gonna to be tough for you. Because there are lots of ups and downs. You have to stay focused on your goal, which is to get the thing out and make it successful. And you will figure out ways um, to get there. So keep your values high, you know, have a conviction to work hard, study hard, and figure out you know, where the problems are and uh, just start focusing on those. And that's what we did. We saw the customers were having problems, and uh, we have to solve them. As a matter of fact, I would bet you if traditional engineers had solved the problem, they would have done it in a very different way compared to how we did it. We took a very comprehensive approach, right? Um, um, I'll talk a little bit technology, whether it's convergence or multicast or quality of service or you know high availability or you know routing protocol evolution, you know security integration with the, with the existing technology. We addressed every piece of the technology step by step. We did not say that we were going to you know, focus on this niche. And mind you, focusing and competing with large companies is not easy, right? And a lot of people are afraid of delving into that. So what they do is they end up focusing on a niche technology which will complement what the large company is doing. You know, 
to me, why, why not just take them on? Right? You have to have that strength to be able to go after the large players and solve the problems better. Right? Whether it's an airplane, right? It's a car, look at what Tesla is, right? Water, any other, right? I mean, you know, you can sell many different ways, even water, right? So you have to come up with the you know idea and just keep working on it, work hard. Eventually, it leads you, you to places. I have a very non-traditional approach to these things. I'm sure when you go to school, you know, people teach you differently. But uh, my thing is, you always have to be confident enough that you wake up in the morning, you think about something, you say, yes, I can do it, you know? And uh, that's the mentality you need to have to be able to succeed. And yes, I can do it better than others, you know? Let, never let anybody, you know, say that, oh, you can't do it. And, uh, you know, I decided to 
was just walking, sitting in front of these guys, so they said, what do you know about uh, architecture? I said, I'm sorry. This is my story. My friend came to me and he said, you know, um, uh, come and I took the test and here I am. If I told you that I knew anything about architecture design, I would be lying. So, so what do you know? What, what do you know? Now they're in my territory, right? So I said, I, you know, play squash and read books and uh, novels. So he started asking me questions about those. So I was able to answer all the questions without, you know, uh, any hesitance. And I got it, right? And imagine, a friend of mine was trying for four years was not able to get in. If I had taken the traditional approach, you know, I would have never gotten into that institute. So you always try to take a very creative approach, think outside the box, you know, and uh, work hard towards it, you'll make it, right? That's, I fundamentally believe in that, right? So I hope I answered your question. Did your friend get it? My friend also got in, but another friend didn't get in, you know, right for four years. <laughs> is he still your friend? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. No loose friends. Um, I have my question along the same line. So, how do you, how did you uh, capture focus and energy high when you were in you know, early stage? Because it seems like you know when you're at that stage, you're pulled in twenty different directions. It's like fighting a sword fight with a windmill. Uh, how do you keep your you know, focus and energy high every single day? You need to be on top of the game every day. Yeah, it's an interesting. Uh, yeah, that's a very interesting question. You know, when I was a child, the missionaries used to come to our uh, homes and try to spread Christianity in Pakistan, and I would always talk to them. You know, whether somebody from a mosque came or a missionary came, I would always be interested. In, you know, trying to figure out what are they talking about. Right? And uh, by the way, when we used to go to you know take squash in our shorts, I without fail had some other you know standing outside and saying, "What are you doing? You need to have longer shots and all that." Right? So we were always having fun with those people. But in any case, you know, uh, these missionaries used to come, come to us and say, um, uh, "You know, learn about this. This is Christianity. This is how things are done, and you should." They tried to convert us. So one article I read in one of the pamphlets that they gave us was that when you wake up in the morning, always be happy, right? Make other people smile, right? And uh, never think negative. If you're breathing, be thankful, right? So if you follow those things, right, you're never unhappy about anything because there are lots of ups and downs in startups, right? Whether it's engineering or marketing or sales or finance or, you know, any operations, you will run into problems. One day you will feel really high, the other day you are going to be feeling down. But the thing about me is my memory is very weak. Right? So I forget about what I did yesterday. So, <laughs> so always keep focusing on this. I don't forget that easy, but you know. But uh, the, the, the key is that you always keep looking forward. Right? And that keeps your spirits high. If you get stuck in, hey, this is the problem, and this is bringing me down, how am I going to solve that? Just like when you're taking an exam, the good teachers always tell you that if you're not able to solve this problem, just skip it. Go to the next one. Solve all the other problems. If you're able to solve 80% of them, you will have the confidence to come back and solve this later. Right? But a lot of kids, they get stuck in solving that problem and they never complete the test. Right? So I was very different from this perspective that I never take anything so seriously that, oh boy, I'm dead. You know? Never let yourself go down. So my uh, family probably, you know, <laughs> my wife is sitting here, you know, I tell my kids also that you need to have fun in life, right? At the same time, you have to have high, you know, very strong values, but be very, very positive no matter what you do, right? And that's what keeps you, because when you are running a company, right, there are thousands of things that bring you down. You know, you're pretty much alone at that level other than the board that you can talk to about things. There are very few people that you can talk to about everything, right? And uh, there are so many different areas that you have to focus on. And if you are down because engineering is not working on this thing and they're not able to get there, right? How are you going to talk to the salesperson the next, right? And develop that strategy and review that? Or how are you going to prepare for the board meeting? 
of how are you going to get and talk to the marketing team, right? Somebody told me that John Chambers used to go to the restroom after every meeting because you know he wanted to switch the context and think about something else before you got to the next meeting. So you have to have broad enough knowledge in every area, right, and have a very positive attitude to be able to pull something like this off. Right? If you're too deep into one technology, then you know you're pretty much doing your PhD in that, and then you're not going to be able to focus on any other areas, which is both areas of life, right? That, that's an area that you choose how you're going to go about solving problems. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, we're, we're really short on time, and I'm sorry about that, so we're going to have to close at this point, we've been told. I, I know, I'm sorry. What, what we can do is, there's a couple of things I wanted to do just before we dismiss, and I'm going to give a few minutes, maybe we can do some things offline, if that's okay? Yeah. Okay, so if you have questions, let's just gather with Amir after, and you can go into it. A couple things I wanted to say. This is a session about startups. How many people in here have an idea that they have, that they want to incubate or start focusing on? Raise your hand. How many people here are looking to invest in people and or ideas? Please, find each other after, the, after this session. Talk to each other. This is what we're here for. All I want to leave you with is, quickly, what did you take away from this conversation today? Anybody? Have an idea and have conviction about it and go for it. Anything else? Awesome. Thank you guys. Really enjoyed it. Thank you.